So we're here tonight to think about risk assessment and yes. I guess something that you do in your private practice and to help us to think about where it might sit in there. Can you give us an idea of what you got what got you thinking about risk assessment? What got you interested in talking about it? And yes, well, uh, I was introduced to uh, risk assessment when I worked in a drug and alcohol agency. Um, at that time, which was in around 2008, 2009, um, risk assessment was very much, you know, in that kind of uh, arena, uh, as you can imagine, because of the uh, the client group is, you know, can be a bit more prone to to be at risk for one reason or another. And uh, so I was trained um, in risk assessment and I found that really useful. And risk assessment was also a standard practice for each, each assessment. We had to do a part of that. So I kind of got into that. And um, what I found is at the beginning, it was kind of a bit you know, automatic, but actually I realized how valuable that was uh, because not only would help the client, but also help myself in terms of understanding the client and their needs in a, in a different way. And um, because I had the training and uh, the experience, I kind of brought that experience into my private practice, which was just starting at the time. And, uh, and since then, I've used uh, the framework, which you know, kind of you know, adapted to private practice because it's, it's very different environment as as you can imagine, and um, and so you know, I've, I, I kind of use it as a standard practice now. But it's very much embedded into the way I work, which is not uh, it's quite humanistic based, so I'm quite relational in that way. Yeah. So as being part of the organisation, doing the drug and alcohol work, I guess a very structured entrance for clients into the organisation where you're doing particular kind of risk assessment I get got you familiar with that process I guess yes absolutely yeah. and uh, it, it was quite useful in, in that way uh, although um, as you said it was very structured and uh, uh, it, it, it was you know you had to follow a very rigid and very very structured protocol which you know uh, suited the kind of agency and the kind of work we were doing there uh, whilst in private practice is not necessarily um, used in the same way. Um, and I think the, the also the, the kind of client that come through private practice are not the, the same kind of client group that we have there. So I think, you know, I have adapted it uh, to, uh, to, to suit my practice as well. Yeah, so that sounds really important that when we're working for ourselves, we've got some freedom there that we can kind of mould things in a way that suits us and the, the, the way that we do them. But I guess there might be the temptation to skip over something that's a bit tricky or a bit more difficult, like risk assessment. And I guess you're alerting as to the importance of that, even when we're working for ourselves. Yes, I think so. It is important for everybody involved, really. I mean... Um, in in private practice, we don't have a um, a statutory requirement to do risk assessment. Of course, there are ethical guidelines that says we have to be uh, sensitive to risk, but this doesn't mean that we have a prescription on how to do it. So at the moment, it's very much up to each one of us how we structure our own practice. And um, um, what I would say that is my experience is that. Um, Yes, can be a bit daunted to start with the idea of dealing with risk. What would I do? It's very an emotional kind of. It can become quite an anxiety-provoking or emotional subject in a private practitioner. But actually, it can be quite helpful, and it can um, as as long as you integrate in the way you work and find a way for you to use it that is resonates with you and how you work. Actually, can be quite quite good for for therapeutic and for the client. Yes, yeah. So I'm really glad you're saying that about the anxiety that can promote um, or it can provoke in us. Um, there is a question in the chat room 
about yeah. the kind of practical bits. I know you can see the chat room too. Okay, so, yes. Yeah. Um, so if I just pick up that question, do you do the risk assessment at the initial inquiry stage, Rita, or when you first meet the client? Or? Yeah. Well, I do a risk assessment as a standard practice at the time of the assessment, which is normally the first session I have with the client. Actually, what I do is I, before I see the client, when I book the appointment with the client, I send some information through the email generally or post, and also I send a, a little questionnaire for the client to fill. It's not um, a questionnaire that is difficult to fill or is not compulsory for them to, to do, and I explain that to them, but it's, it's like a... Um, a questionnaire that gives you some indication of the level of anxiety and depression that the, the client might have. And I found that actually that uh, helps me to speed up, you know, the, the risk assessment. And so I send this, and then when I see the client, uh, they generally either take the questionnaire or they have emailed it back. And then I use, um, during the, you know, the first encounter, at some point I will ask some questions that I have in mind, and they reflect. Um, the, the major topic of risk or the major indicators of risk so that I can get an idea of where the client is in terms of those. Mm. Yeah, so your risk assessment is starting even before you've met the client. Yeah. So you're taking it very seriously. Well, I, yes, and also I find that that um, is is helpful to me because it, it kind of frees some of the time that I have face to face with the client to ask the more sensitive questions or to be with that person at that particular moment. But also um, often I find that the clients find that useful as well. The, the, the questionnaire is very simple and it's not very um, difficult to, to, to fill. And what they say, the feedback has been that uh, actually it's been useful for them to feel because it makes them think and it makes them kind of realize perhaps what, they, um, what they've been feeling. So when they come to the session, they are already a little bit more aware of where they are. So overall, I would say that the feedback from the clients uh, has been positive about using this questionnaire. And very rarely I had people who either have not filled the questionnaire or they have refused. Very, very few cases. Yeah, so... It sounds in a way quite generous that you're giving the clients a way to begin the therapy really ready for that experience because if they've, they've thought about these questions, they've thought about how they are. And yeah, absolutely. Also, you can use.